Welcome to the briefcast. Watching Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series, Episode 5. If you're trying to sync it up, we're at about 450 in the recording. They're going over the rules of the octagon right now. Now we're taking a look at the rest of the lineup for tonight. Five fights. Heavyweight, bantamweight, flyweight, featherweight, and a light heavyweight bout. Good variety. About to get started here with the first fight. Sims vs. Graves, heavyweight bout to kick off the action. This guy's working out like a beast. The show has really good production value. I mean, same idea as some of the stuff they do, do in The Ultimate Fighter. Just doing a good job of getting you engaged with guys you probably never even heard of. Tell their story a little bit right now. Talk about his story. He's working out. Getting ready in the back. I made a post on Reddit the other day about how the UFC is on a break until September 2nd and just pointed out the fact that uh, Legacy Fighting Alliance is holding three events in that time span. Some haters, obviously, but my point was that a lot of people are saying, well, we, we have Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series until then. True. But that's not UFC. This isn't UFC. This is on UFC Fight Pass, but these guys aren't, aren't in the UFC. They don't have Reebok shorts. They don't have any deal with the UFC. They're trying to get the deal. That's the point of the show. Uh, and my point was that a lot of the, these fighters come from LFA. So if you're interested in watching this, you'll probably be interested in watching LFA, which is on Access TV. I haven't been watching a lot of Access TV fights lately, ever since they canceled Inside MMA. I mean, that was a heartbreaker. Fucking best show in MMA. Took it off the air. And I love Mauro Ranello, but I feel like his first couple of shows with Boss were pretty, pretty rough. They're really trying to hype these guys. A lot of see a lot of time and like production value and whatnot. Just telling the, these guys stories, trying to educate you real quick. But I, I personally just want to see them get in the octagon now. All right, Shelton Graves, first man to make the walk. I love the intimacy of the Ultimate Fighter gym because you can just like not a lot of space, not a lot of crowd, but you can hear everybody. And that's one of my favorite things about the Ultimate Fighter is that there isn't any commentary. All you hear is the the kicks landing to the body or I just it, I don't know, it's just just different experience, so It'd be amazing if I could get the crowd noise plus my voice instead of these goombas. I 
Like, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the Snoopcast the first couple weeks, but he doesn't know shit about fighting. So, I don't know. I'm a, I've always been a huge Joe Rogan guy. I love watching the Fight Companions. Even though half the time they don't really even talk about the fights. And I don't, I don't do it live. Like, if I have a bunch of friends over and we're going to watch the fights, I don't try to sync up the Fight Companion. But the next day, if I have a chance, I'll go to my recording of the fights. I'll sync up with the Fight Companion. And it's just a different experience, you know. So I think Joe Rogan's really the pioneer of the idea. I think the UFC saw that. And were like, oh, we'll put Snoop Dogg. I, I believe Joe Rogan came up with the idea. So if I'm borrowing from anybody, it's it's him. All right, Tyron Woodley, in the bottom left corner, talking about Everett Sims. They are teammates. Yeah, so if you haven't watched the Snoopcast, I found, you know, it is entertaining. He just basically smokes weed and drinks, but he doesn't know shit about the fighters. And, you know, he's been, he's been rubbing people the wrong way. Saying some stuff that he, you know, you gotta stay in your lane. Anything that can be taken as fighter bashing is not going to be tolerated in the MMA community. I mean, maybe to a certain degree, but when you're Snoop Dogg and you literally don't know shit about fighting, and you're talking bad, calling people bitches, and crying like a bitch, and this guy was like, only two losses were to John Jones. I'm talking about the Daniel Cormier comments. Here we are, we're about to get started here. Six foot five Everett Sims, six foot one Shelton Graves. Both heavier, around that 260 range. Mark Smith's referee. As soon as the fight starts, I'm going to run a clock so that you know exactly where and now. Sims got the center of the, the octagon. Nice leg kick. Sims looked for a left hand. Graves backed him up against the fence, but... He's got an over-under, but he just got reversed by Graves. Pressing against the cage. These are some big fellas. Let's hope that the, uh, the cage is reinforced. Nice body shot from both men. Still, still in this over-under position here. No one's really shook yet. They're just locked up like two Nubian Ibexes. I don't know if you've ever seen two Nubian Ibexes fight, but Google it. YouTube, that shit's amazing. Oh, big knee to the body from Sims. And Graves is looking for the takedown. Against the cage. He's got a single. He's got a single. Uh, he gets him up in the air. He takes Sims to the ground. Sims is looking for a, a choke. Guillotine probably just a... Oh shit, that looked like a wiener punch. Wiener punch from Graves. Like three of them. Sims is working his way back up to his feet, just as I suspected he used that guillotine to stand back up. Well, he's clinched up against the cage here. Graves is driving into him. Not really landing anything significant. I saw a couple hammer fists to the, the hamstring area. Oh, knee to the body from Sims. He's... Oh, another knee to the body from Sims.
Oh, he almost had... Graves almost had the takedown. Now he's got his back. Graves has his back. I'm not sure he's going to be able to do anything with it. This guy's so... He's... Oh, okay, the Kimura. Look for the Kimura. Once again, this is probably just another thing. To get him back to his feet. I don't know if he's threatening very hard with it. Yeah, it's interesting to see these all-black MMA gloves. Reminds you of a different time period. I remember, like, one of the first World Series of Fighting events. I think it was either Andre Arlovsky or Rumble Johnson. They were, it was Arlovsky for sure. He was wearing UFC gloves uh, that were, like, permanent markered over the UFC. I thought that was interesting. Okay, so Graves is still on top. Sims has still got the Kimura locked up, but oh, Graves finally got his hand out. Now he's, he's in half guard on top. He's, he's controlling him, but he's he's not landing anything powerful. He had a chance right there to get his his right leg out of half half. Now he doesn't want to get out of half guard, but Sims just gave up his back. Rolls through, man. This guy, for a, for a big guy like uh, he is, I'm a, I'm impressed with some of his uh, sweeps. For how big he is, Sims, that is. And Graves is just all over him right now. I, I'm wondering how much energy. Oh, jeez, Sims is. Is using right now. That's the end of the first round. For such a big guy, he's maneuvering around the mat, trying to do a lot of work. We had Graves on him for most of the most of the time on the floor. Catching some wind right now. Both men seem pretty tired. All right. Gonna drop the timer here. Let you know the round's about to start. Round two here. Heavyweight matchup. Two gentlemen I've never had the privilege of seeing fight before, but both look like they could physically make it to the UFC one day. Graves is kind of unorthodox. He's kind of bull rushing with his hands down just to get in close. And he's ch just chasing him around the ring right now. Octagon, rather. No another couple hammer fists to the, to the hamstring. Gets him to the ground. Graves is uh, very relentless with his takedowns. His top pressure seems great. He's putting his hips right on top of Sims' hips. Just really just riding him. Hitting him with some shots, but I mean, it's... these are just, you know, letting you know he's there. They're not, you know, they're... he's not putting much behind him. Yeah, they're kind of thumpers. 
I don't want to get hit by one, but they're not like John Jones versus Cormier a couple weeks ago type of ground and pound. It's kind of a little, yeah, he's, he's thumping him. He's just controlling him so well. He's on the back. And he doesn't want to give up his position. He knows that if he just stays right here, this guy's going to have a really hard time shaking him. Two minutes, 55 seconds left in the second round. Looks like Graves is starting to turn up the juice a little bit on these shots. Sneaking a, an uppercut underneath that left arm of Sims. Consistently. Now he's going to the body a little bit. And that uppercut two times, three times. And now Sims is trying to get smart and block with that uh, right right arm. Because he, he's blocking his head with his left, leaving a hole right up the middle underneath. And Graves is making him pay. Hmm. A couple of big shots to the body. Goes back to the body. Hmm. Rip into the body. Referee's taking a real close look. I, I'm not sure this has been, you know, intelligent defense. But I just don't think it, it's lacked a big shot that's hurt him really badly. But he's been doing nothing. And Graves throws a hammer fist to the head. So you might want to turn up the pressure and get this... Get out of there. He's beating the body right now. Does not look very fun. Oh, man. He's trying to work the knees of the body. He's got him turtled up right now. He's slamming knees of the body like George St. Pierre versus Matt Serra, too. Oh, another one. Come on. The referee. Hmm. I just don't see how this is proper intelligent defense. It's got to be. I mean, these aren't huge shots, but it's the, the amount. And the fact that he's been here the whole round. I don't want to see a third round, honestly, between these two guys. I'd like it to be over right now. I mean, this is crazy. Jesus. Oh, knee to the body. 17 seconds to go. Another knee to the body. Come on, ref. Another knee to the body. Come on, ref. Another knee to the body. He wants this to go a third round. I don't understand why. These are some brutal fucking shots. And that's the end of round two. What is this guy's problem? Oh, he's going to take a close look at him here in between rounds. I do guess messed up. I don't know how he's going to be able to recover. Showing some highlights of the of the round, the story of the fight, just him riding him, him turtled up. Round three. This is exactly why I did not want to see a third round.
Graves bu bum rushes him, gets him up against the cage. Looking for that single leg, I would imagine. And Sims needs to keep this fight standing at all costs. I mean, this is the this is as closest to the big shows you're going to get. And he's back on his he's back on his back. Graves working from side control right now. And from the last round, I just don't see Sims going anywhere. He doesn't seem to have any energy to be able to pull that off. Graves and Mount here, trying to posture up. <clears throat> Sims holding the back of his head. Doesn't want him to posture up. Once he does that, he's going to be able to put a lot more momentum in his shots. He's still in Mount. He's trying to give up his back now. Sims gave up his back, but Graves hasn't been able to land anything substantial yet. More knees to the body from Graves. I mean, come on. These are... Oh, yeah, okay. Finally. At 2 minutes, 38 seconds, around 3, the referee had seen enough. It's a good win. I don't think it's going to get him a UFC contract, but that was a good win. Story of the fight, takedowns, top control, ground and pound. Once again, they're going to show another highlight here. Takedown, top control, and eventually ground and pound. It's very... His, his top half is very wide, and it's it, it, he's got wide hips too. So if, I think if he can take anybody down, he might just keep him there because he's, oh man, those knees to the body, I'm telling you, vicious. It was a great finish, but I just don't know. We got four more fights here. His family's very happy. I'm assuming they're their, his family. Oh yeah, it's got to be his mom. Shelton Graves, winner by TKO, round three. Two minutes, 20 seconds. He's heading to the back. Probably get a little interview. Oh, yeah. I don't know who this girl is or if she knows anything about fighting. Apparently, name's Laura Sanko. I think that's his wife. Yes. His wife and his family. Five fight win streak. 
for Shelton Graves. It was a good performance, but we'll see what the rest of the night has to store. I'm personally hoping that's not the best performance of the night. It was a dominant one. But coming off this past weekend, seven first round finishes, I'd like to see something dynamic. I'd like to see something explosive. Uh, whether it be a, a knockout or a submission. But a finish a little earlier than halfway through the last round, for sure. Alright, looks like they're getting ready for the second fight. Going to be a bantamweight matchup between Ricky Simone and Donovan Freelow. Bantamweight is one of my favorite divisions. I love that they can do everything. They don't get tired. They mix everything up. TJ Dillashaw, one of my favorites. Supposedly, him versus Cody Garbrandt, UFC 217 in Madison Square Garden. That's what I'm hearing all over the internet. So let's hope that fight finally happens. I was going to buy... Uh, TJ Dillashaw championship t-shirts, the old Reebok ones from his original title reign. Get them now. Get them while they're cheap, you know what I mean? That's what I'm thinking. I think they're like 17 bucks now. You could save yourself like 13 bucks if you buy them ahead of time. Hopefully he wins the title. If not, you can just be like, hey, he was one of my favorite champions. That's my plan. All right, right now, this Laura Sanko girl is talking to Cleo Roundtree, UFC light heavyweight, and Donovan Freelow's younger brother, apparently. Younger brother, but he's much bigger. Uh, Freelow's 135 pounds, and he competes at 205, so. They have different last names. Maybe a half brother? I don't know. Alright, we're about to get started here with the hype package, of course. Freelo's got some cool tattoos, I'll tell you that right now. Yep, there's a lot of hype in these production 
packages, but I'd, I'd really just like to see these guys get in, get in there and fight. Hitting pads, hitting pads. Everybody's hitting pads. Okay, it's like some weird technical difficulties. Looks like the production team tried to switch cameras and it said like no video link. It's kind of weird. Donovan Freelo, Khalil Roundtree's brother, is the first to make his way to the octagon. Roundtree looks very uh, nervous for his brother. And Ricky Simone finally makes his way out. Find him at Twitter and Instagram at Ricky Simone135. Cross my fingers for uh, for a finish on this one. Hopefully, Take a look at the tail of the tape. Simone's 24, Freelo 32. Freelo's going to have a 1 inch height advantage, but Simone's going to have the 3 inch reach advantage. And of course, the big number that sticks out is that 8 years younger for Ricky Simone. And this fight's just about to get started. I'm going to start the clock here. 
right now. Jumping knee attempt. Early from Freelo. Look for the right hand. He's just charging after him. Lands the right hand against K. John Simone. Left hand of the body. Another left hand of the body. Simone ties him up, puts his back against the cage. Nice knee of the body from Simone. Another one. Oh, elbow over the top. Looking for the takedown. Simone has got the takedown. He's almost in side control if he wants it. But, nope. Freelo stands up. Simone's still all over him. Another knee to the body. That one blocked, but eats an elbow. It's not where Freelo wants to be. Turns him, get, reverses positions against the cage. He now has Simone against the cage, but Simone fires another knee to the body. And now they're, they're back in the center of the octagon. Another takedown from Simone. Freelo works himself to the cage. He's going to try to use it to stand up. He's got a guillotine, but I think he's also using that to stand up. And he's back up. He's back down. Wow. Oh, wow. What a big takedown from Simone. He just picked him up and walked him across the cage. Slammed him against the cage. Freelo is relentless, man. He just keeps getting back up. Simone just keeps going for the takedown. Looks like he's going to get it again here. Quite the pace. Right now... Simone just got another takedown. We're at 210 of the first round. Freelo back to his feet. Reverses positions. Now he has Simone's back against the cage again. But this is not where he wants to be. He wants to be in MMA range. He has to disengage from this clinch because he could easily get trip takedown. Again, seems to be a strength advantage somewhat for Ricky Simone. So this is, this is where Freelo wants to be. He's loose. He's in the center of the octagon. He's setting things up. Simone looked for a couple of high, high kicks there. Just missed with the right hand. Missed with the jumping knee. Now, oh! Freelo missed with the knee of his own. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This guy's acrobatic. Freelo. Jumping across the octagon. Covers distance very fast. Looks for a left high kick there. Simone's about to get another takedown. Wow, that one was defended pretty well. 16 seconds left, and Freelo's on his back again. But he's a ninja, and he's already up. 
If you can start making him pay for these takedown attempts, it might be an interesting round two. Showing some highlights from that first round. And a lot of the highlights are going to have to be the takedowns. Especially that one. That one was impressive. What was equally as impressive... Not on this takedown. That one was just... That was a good takedown. But on the other ones... No, he, he pops right back up on that one too. He, he pops right back up, so... Let's see how the takedowns go if... if he, if Simone can still get the takedowns, if Relo can't get up as quickly, we'll see. Maybe he can stifle them all together. Another big takedown from Simone. Freelo's right back up. We're at about 335. Nice leg kick. Excuse me, 435. <clears throat> Interesting. Freelo en engaged the clinch against the cage here. a cut in the left eye of uh, Simone. Freelo's just going at him right now. He covers distance really fast. I'd be interested to see if he can make 125 pounds. Simone pressing forward, looking for a, a big punch right now. Kind of a went away from the takedowns. A lot of energy. Oh, look for a left high kick too. Frillo does not want to stand in front of him necessarily. He needs to do what he's doing, create these angles. But should try to set up a combination. He's kind of looking for one big one. Set up a combination. He did a really good job going low with a couple leg kicks earlier. Good leg kick from Simone. I gotta say, neither man is. You know, this is about getting the UFC contract, and you gotta really blow the doors off. So, I think they're, this is a good fight, but unless something spectacular happens, I don't see either man getting a contract here. Oh. Simone looking for a spinning back elbow. Nice side kick to the body from Freelo. Simone charges in. Gets him up against the cage. Nice knee to the body from Simone. Freelo, excuse me. Oh! Another spinning back elbow from Simone. Wow, Freelo goes for his first takedown attempt. It's thwarted, and Simone turns it into his own takedown. And Freelo is not in a good spot here. So 
minute 10 to go. Once again, look for that spin. Nice right hand from Freelo. I'd say the speed advantage definitely goes to Freelo. A couple times it really looks like Simone is caught off guard by how quick Freelo is, but now he's going for the single leg. Looking to take the back. Simone's got his back. Fired up a knee. Trying to trip those legs out. Interesting to see. Okay. Yep. End of the round. Interesting to see where this cut is exactly on Ricky Simone. Doesn't look like it's in a bad spot. All the blood's kind of leaking down the side of his face, but let's see if it's on the eyelid, maybe the eyebrow. That was that leg kick I was talking about. Very nice leg kick. So these are the combinations he needs to throw. Freelo had his moments there. Every time he got taken down, he got right back up. Freel looks very tired. He's got to come out here in the third round. Really perform if he wants to be in the UFC. Same to Ricky Simone. Both had to put themselves out there and understand what this is. This is they've been calling it the ultimate job interview. So this isn't just another day, you know. At the office. Dana hates it when, when fighters fight not to lose. He wants to see you fight to win. Don't be so cautious. Not not that these guys have been, but you gotta put yourself out there at a certain point. Otherwise, no one wants to watch you fight, and Dana doesn't want you in the UFC if no one wants to watch you fight, so. I think this is a really good fight. Oh, wow. Crazy takedown from Simone. Locked it up. It looks like he's got... Wow! Wow! He turns into it. Wow, that was really cool. He had it like on the back with the crucifix. Almost locked up like a... Sideways, three-quarter rear naked. Now Simone's standing right back in front of him. In front of the, right in front of the... Oh, wow. They're both exchanging here. Freelo's got his back against the cage. Oh, Freelo, a couple nice left hands, but Simone smiles at him. Freelo fires up a head kick that misses. Nice head movement from Simone and a counter right hand. Left and another right from Simone. Oh, nice left from Freelo. An uppercut from Freelo. All right, three minutes, ten seconds to go here in the last round. And they've definitely picked up the pace. That's what I love about these bantamweights. They hit a different different uh, reserve. Whereas the heavyweights, you know they're gassed. They're probably not coming back like we saw in that first fight. These bantamweights, give them a minute breather. They're coming out firing on all cylinders. Pace has slowed down a bit. Two minutes, 30 seconds left in this last round. Another uppercut attempt from Freelo. Left hand from Simone. Nice right hand from Simone. 
Wow. Free low. Oh. Just got shoved to the ground. He got right back up. Got greeted with a knee to the body. Nice kick to the body, but right over the top from Simone. Simone's right in front of his face. This guy's back against the cage. He's looking for a single leg. Nope. Double leg. Got it. And Freelo's on his back once again. Trying to use that cage to get back to his feet like he has many times in this fight. Minute 20 left in this last round. Freo looks tired. And Simone gets the double leg takedown once again. Thirty seconds to go here. Freelo's trying to get back to his feet. Simone's not making it easy. He's back up, but he's going back down. Oh, nice elbow. Final ten seconds here. Looks like Ricky Simone might cruise to a decision win. I wouldn't say it was an easy fight by any means, but this takedown game we'll wait for the judges decision All right, we're still waiting on the judge's decision here. If I had a guess, I'd say Ricky Simone. Yep, Ricky Simone. Yep, you see the gash there, kind of the outside, not even in a bad spot.
Good win for Ricky Simone. He's making the walk to the back right now. In the back of his mind, he's got to think, did I do enough to get that contract? Being interviewed right now by Laura Sanko. Looks like a blood teardrop just ran down. Looks like a mixture of sweat right through that cut. Looks like he was crying blood. We're taking a look back on some of the highlights here. Big takedown. That's a big takedown. That's like Matt Hughes versus Frank Trigg type shit. It's just so relentless on the takedowns. So they're posting the upcoming schedule for Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series. We got that the 15th, 22nd, and 29th during the whole break. And of course, August 26th is Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather. So even though there isn't UFC per se until September 2nd, we got Dana White Contender Series. We got LFA. We got the freak show that is the money fight. I think there's going to be plenty of combat sports to keep us satisfied. Just got to look a little harder. All right, they started the hype package for the next fight, flyweight matchup between Alex Perez. I'm not sure quite yet. Alex Perez versus Kevin Gray. Excited to see the tail of the tape here. See how tall these flyweights are.
I'm not sure what he's doing there, but it looks strenuous. Good way to break a kid's fucking legs. Okay. Champion in his past organization here was Kevin Gray. Fighting out of Topeka, Kansas, Kevin Gray making his way out. And that Odell Beckham style haircut is really in these days. Alright, so I'm cautiously optimistic about this fight. I'm hoping there's a finish. Alex Garcia making his way out. Very focused. He knows they have to make an impression here if he wants to leave with the UFC contract. I don't think the first competitor, four competitors we saw in either of those two first fights are going to get a contract. So these guys have to go out there and put it out on the line. Alex Perez. I said Garcia. I just said Garcia multiple times. I, I can't quite remember. Let's just say if whatever they do on Snoopcast, we're doing on the briefcast too. Try to stay up with them. Have a couple of drinks. Put a little in the air. Seven years older is Kevin Gray. And the fight is underway. Well, fast pace here from these flyweights. Wow, Perez is ripping with some knees. Wow. Perez is mixing it up really nice, straight punches, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a knee right at the middle. Nice leg kick from Perez.
Kevin Gray really hasn't landed much so far. I think he's felt a couple of uh, strikes from Perez. Oh, nice right hand from Perez. And it's kind of hesitant at this point. He looked very... Okay, nice leg kick from Gray. Looked very aggressive early on. Took a couple knees and now a couple leg kicks. Seems very hesitant. And Perez just seems to be stalking him, waiting for that opening. With leg kick from Gray. Gray attempts at a left hand over the top. Well, looks like Gray's getting a little more comfortable. Light on his feet. He's changing up angles. He's actually throwing. Oh, wow. Kevin Gray looking for that deep double leg takedown, but he missed it. He's holding on. Oh! Just took a vicious knee. Shooting for a takedown. Oh, wow, and he just locked up a darts choke. Perez has got this fight right now. It's only a matter of time. Gray's out. He just went out. Eyes wide open. Oh, man, that's creepy. Alex Perez. That's an impressive performance right there. Chito Vera in the crowd. UFC fighter. Man. That was the best performance of the night right there. Alex Perez. First round Darce Choke. Technical submission. Kevin Gray never even got a chance to tap. He was rendered unconscious. I hope in the replay they show that knee right before he set the choke up. Because that was really the the beginning of the end. Oh, no, they're not going to do it because they suck. They're just going to show the Dars, which he locked up beautifully. But there's a knee as you shooting. That really put him on fuck street. He's out, man. Just the, his eyes creepy. They're so wide open. I always find it like just you know creepy when someone gets choked out, obviously. But then, like all the movies you you saw, and like takes them like six seconds to choke someone to death, and they're like, "Oh God!" It's like if you just resuscitate them; they'll be alive. Just put them in the recessive position and get some airflow through their their lungs. They'll be back. They'll be back. What I'm saying is, they made it. Seem like you could choke someone really easily to death in movies when you now you really have to hold that choke for several minutes and you know it's creepy to see someone go unconscious is all I'm saying in a fight like that eyes wide open choked right out you're like Jesus is he dead don't worry he's not movies just scare you Perez celebrating with Chito Vera and now he's about to talk to Borisenko. That's the type of performance right there Dana White's looking for. He would uh, definitely be a welcome addition to the flyweight division. They gotta get a better setup in the back there. Looks like they're looking at a tiny monitor on the floor or some shit. Like, you know, why don't you hang up a fucking flat screen on a wall mount?
Big win for Eric Perez. We got two more fights left, but I'd be surprised if he left without a contract after that performance. Alright, up next. Peter Pettis versus Julio Ars in a featherweight matchup. I love the variety in this uh, in this week, and now they're going to preview next week. I, I believe, yeah, first women's matchup in Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series: Tiffany Masters versus Jamie Colleen. Flyweight bout between Martin Day and Jamie Alvarez. Light heavyweight bout between Carl Reed and Cameron Olsen. Middleweight bout between two guys. The top two fights are going to be middleweight bouts next week. Action packed. Alright, about to start this hype package for the fourth fight of the night. Given their little rating system, giving Petty's the wrestling advantage, the ground game supposedly goes to ours, athleticism's even, and a half point power advantage for Petty's. Showing this graphic for a really long time. If I was you at this point, I would just probably turn the volume up, kind of catch some of the, the story that they have going on. Me, I don't really care. Like I said, it's all just, you know, fighter shadow boxing, hitting pads, lifting heavy weights, wrapping hands, telling you a story about how their cousin got shot or they got shot or, you know, whatever it is. I, you know, they lost their girlfriend, I don't know. So it's some sort of little drama to try to suck you in with. I don't know what they're saying, so maybe they're just saying, I'm a fighter, I got no drama in my life, I just like smashing people in the face. Okay, this guy was on, looking for a fight, apparently. Funny looking belt, like boxing movie tie style belt or something. Definitely not a mixed martial arts belt. Joseph Morales. Had a big win just last week. UFC Fight Night 114 from Mexico City. Let's fight, man. Let's, let's just do it. Alright, I haven't even heard this, but it's like, just raised by a single mother, they lived out of a hotel room, he really liked the cross. 
and he found out about PJJ. Started teaching kids. Might have even had a kid of his own. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going off here because I'm not listening to it. I would advise you to just, you know, tune in to these little, like, hype portions and just turn me down. I don't know. I would assume. I don't know. Do whatever you want. But this guy looks pretty explosive. That was a nice spinning back fist, maybe even back elbow finish he had there. It seems like that. Oh, yeah. It was back fist. But that seems like to be, I don't know, it blew their wad on his highlight reel. The rest of it was like him just throwing punches that didn't even land. It's like, what the hell? What are you showing me? All right, finally. Someone's about to burst through that door. Sean Shelby in the bottom left corner here talking about this fighter. Julio Ars. Golden Gloves Boxing Champion. I had said that. It looked like a boxing championship, not a MMA belt. Current Ring of Combat Featherweight Champion and former Ring of Combat Bantamweight Champion. This Julio Arce guy seems to be quite the prospect. He's got a three-fight win streak. I'm excited for this fight. That was interesting. It said he won the last two out of his three fights. It's really not a awful, awfully uh, impressive stat. Won two out of your last three. I don't know. It's not a very big sample size. Like if he had won 13 to 15, I'd be like, okay, well, that's pretty, pretty good. You're just going to tell him he's won the last two out of three. I mean, that means he could have lost his last fight or the one before that. I don't know. At best, he's on a two-fight win streak. All right, 5'11 for Peter Pettis to 5'7 Julio Arce. 26 for Pettis, 27 years old for Julio Arce. Jason Herzog is the referee, and we're about to start this contact right now. Nice left hand from Petty's. Nice right hand from Petty's. Oh, nice right hand from Petty's. He seems very athletic. And, and in the beginning, they said he had the wrestling advantage as well. Even though he looks like the better striker. Use that wrestling in reverse. But they also said Julio Ars had the advantage on the ground, so if Ars can get this fight to the ground. 
might look for a submission. Peter Petty looks very, uh, very skilled. I'd like to see him get off the cage here. Get that, get out of that underhook. Arse right now has got wrist control as well against the cage, and he just reverse the position. I've seen a lot of this tonight. Putting guys against the cage. That's why hey, Joe Rogan recommended a basketball court. Which isn't a bad idea. No walls to hold people up against. Both men in the center of the octagon right now. Oh, nice right hand from ours. Oh, wow. Peter Petty's just got his back. Drags him up against the cage now. It's trying really hard for a takedown, it looks like. Not a lot going on here. I see some people in the crowd looking at their phones. So much isn't going on. Nice spinning breakfast attempt. And now, oh, Petty's let, let a couple hands go. And ours return fire. Got it. One minute left in round one. For another spinning attack, did Petty's. Not sure what's going on here. Do you know there's 10 seconds left? Hard round to score. Some damage to the left eye of Julio Ars. Let's see how bad it is. Cutman's getting to work on it. It's kind of hard to see right now. Oh yeah, that left eye does not look good. 
for Julio Ars. Front kick of the body from Julio Ars. Petty's is head hunting right now, but oh, Ars is firing back. Oh, sometimes that that wakes you up a little bit, you know, knowing that you're you're compromising a fight. You gotta put your foot on the gas pedal. Plus, you're here at Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series. You have to perform at a super high level and put an exclamation point on your fight. You can't just come out there and, and win by decision and think you're going to get the, the nod. Spinning back kick attempt. Oh, 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 unloading. Julio Ars just unloaded against the cage, and he's going back right to it. He's got him hurt. Oh, big left hand. Another one. Hooks to the body. Left hand. Petty's is in some trouble right now. Seems to be weathering the storm. Oh, but he sneaks in another left hand. Julio Ars is putting it on Petty's. If he lands another good combination against the cage like that, Jason Herzog is going to have to jump in. Oh, looking for a big uppercut. Just missed. Rip into the body now. Oh, Julio Arce. He needs to get his back off the cage just Petty's if he wants to stay in this fight. Because if Arce just applies a little bit of pressure here, Herzog is going to have to jump in. Oh, wow, he doesn't even have his legs underneath him. This fight's going to be over. Fight is going to be over. Herzog is taking a real good look at it. Knee to the body. Oh, another punch. Petty's just trying to get out of there. But Herzog has seen enough, and the fight is over at 219 of round two. That was a really good performance from Julio Ars in the second round. He really turned it up. Once he got his back against the cage, he just unloaded on multiple occasions. Referee had no choice but to stop it after those first two flurries. Gets him to the ground, beats him up. And... That's a good performance. I don't know if it's going to be enough for a contract. We're going to see. Showing the highlights here. Big left hands, left hand, right hand. Threatening a choke. Just hold his head down. Knees him to the body. Hook to the side of the head. Tries to get up here. Uppercuts, hooks. Straight punches. Herzog just seen enough, man. I'm almost positive if Herzog would have been the referee for the first fight, wouldn't have saw a third round after that brutal second round. From Graves, when he's just landing those knees of the body and had him in the same position, turtled up the whole round. Herzog is a good enough official, he would have broke that up. He'd been like, you know what, it's done. I'm supposed to protect you. 2.39 is the official time. TKO Julio Ars in the second round. It looks like the legendary Bruce Irvin was in the corner of Peter Petty's.
big win. I said it before, I think that that eye injury really just set a fire under his ass. He realized where he was, he wasn't going to just go out like that. He needed to really apply some pressure, and it got him the finish. He's talking to Laura Sanko right now. Just an accumulative type of finish. It wasn't one big shot. Just put put a storm on him. And Petty's just need to get his back off that cage. He was not safe there. And Ars felt that. He felt, I put this guy's back against the cage. I can throw a lot of shots and I might be able to land some big ones. And that's what he did on multiple occasions. Big win for Julio Ars. Four fight winning streak now. And if we don't see him in the UFC, I'd love to see him back here in the Contender Series. So just like that, after this interview, we're about to head into the last fight. Check out the hype package there. See what's up. Been... One really good performance, I thought, from Alex Perez. In the last fight, we got Mike Rodriguez versus Jamel Jones in a light heavyweight bout. Contract still very much up for grabs. And one of these guys wants to walk away. An official UFC fighter. All right, they're just running down the schedule here. Letting you know that Polaris BJJ, Titan FC 45, and Glory Kickboxing, all available on the UFC Fight Pass app. I love this tough gym. I really do. It's such a nice venue. Plus so many big fights that I have I've watched over the years have taken place right there. They're showing Eve Edwards power rankings, Alex Perez at the top of the list, Julio Ars number two, Ricky Simone number three, and Shelton Graves number four so far. I think that's probably just uh who who's gonna get the contract. I totally agree with his number one pick, Alex Perez, chucking out his opponent, Kevin Gray, in the first round. Very impressive. All right, we're going to start the hype package here. Mike Rodriguez versus Jamel Jones. And I'd love to know what he's talking about. So feel free if you want to turn up the volume and watch these hype packages. I really don't know what he's saying. But I don't think it's going to make me like this fight anymore. I like get this formula. I've seen it. I just want to see him fight, to be honest.
All right, Jamel Jones, first guy making his way out. Fighting out of Atlantic City, New Jersey. A place I've always wanted to go. Ever since I saw Boardwalk Empire, I'm like, damn, Atlantic City seems dope as shit. Go check out some, like, old, you know, uh, fucking Prohibition era type of shit. That'd be sweet, but everybody tells me it's it's really terrible. There's, like, no money left there. And I guess I'll just take their word for it, but one day, I'll travel to the home of Jamel Jones. All right, five wins by knockout. Former two-time NC, oh, excuse me, NJC AA wrestling champion. I'm guessing that's National Junior College Association, Athletic Association, something like that. So not quite a two-time NCAA wrestling champion, but high level at least. Winner of five of his last seven. Here comes Mike Rodriguez. You can find him at Twitter and Instagram at MRODMMA. Oh, that's right, he's under the tutelage of the great Joe Lozon. I'll forever be a Joe Lozon fan. I was in Nashville April 22nd of this year when he fought Stevie Ray. Looked great in that first round. Stevie Ray ended up pulling off the decision win. But Joe's had some amazing performances. Probably one of his best would be against Diego Sanchez. Not sure what is going on right now with Mike Rodriguez, but he's covering his ear and touching every post. Four inch height advantage for Rodriguez and a six inch reach advantage as well. He's a year younger than Jamel Jones and has a significant height and reach advantage. Mark Smith is the referee. He's the guy who let that first fight go a little long, so we'll see how he does this time. I don't play any bullshit. I'll call you out, man. Do your job. Protect the fighters. And we're off. First round. 456, 455. Nice outside leg kick from Jamel Jones. And another one. Still feeling each other out here at the 410 mark. A lot of leg attacks being thrown. Mel Jones here, dipping his head a lot. 
a lot. Mike Rodriguez can get a read on that. Time a uppercut, head kick, knee, whatever it may be. And Jamel Jones goes hard for a takedown, stuffed by Mike Rodriguez. Makes him pay with a knee to the body as well. Mike Rodriguez continuing to kick at that, that lead leg. Kind of that controversial kick that John Jones likes to throw. Oh! 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 The fight is over at 245 of the first round at Flying Knee. Went about two or three punches followed up on the ground. Huge explosion. Oh, that's a contract. Wow. By far the most exciting moment of the night right there. Mike Rodriguez just slammed the door. Let's see this replay, man. I, I noticed that Jamel Jones was dipping his head an awful lot. And a flying knee almost out of nowhere. Put him on his back and a little bit of ground and pound. Sealed the deal for Mike Rodriguez. Medical attention is being administered right now. Jamel looks like his nose is a little... Oh, fucked up. Yep, he dipped his head right into that flying knee. Took some ground and pound. And to his credit, the referee was right there to stop it. Pumped out a jab just to bait him. He ducked his head, flying knee. And that follow-up punch right there, that first one, was really what, what did it. It's a big win. Big win for Mark, Mike Rodriguez. I'd be shocked if he didn't get a contract after that. Joe Lozon in his corner, feeling pretty good. They're going to make it official here. Well, Jamel Jones is still on, on the stool. Dana White's making his way to the back. As his nose will not stop bleeding here. Made it official. Mike Rodriguez, knockout. 2.15. First round. Selfie time. Alright, well that was a good night of fights. We're just going to wait around. See who got the contract. A little bit here. Thank you for listening. Tuning in. I'm trying to make this a, a regular thing. Dana White, Tuesday Night Contender Series. Hit you with the brief cast. And depending on the severity of the fight, if it's a if it's a lower level card, I might do a brief cast. If it's a big pay-per-view, I probably just want to enjoy it. don't really want to have to do anything except for watch and enjoy. But we'll see here. Mike Rodriguez in the back talking to Laura Sanko. Seems very emotional. Seems like he might have swore. Record in nine and two with four straight knockouts. That's impressive. He's got to be the one that's getting the contract. But Dennis also 
given away multiple contracts. So, I mean, the tagline is like 10 fighters, one contract every week, but there's been seven contracts over the four week span. I have a feeling there might be two tonight. Just really waiting. He's wrapping up his interview with Laura Sanko here. Find out who got the contract or contracts. Let's get over. I mean, this is like the longest interview I've ever seen. Wrap it up, Sanko. Finally. Misha Tate in the back. Stay tuned, Dana White decides who makes it to the UFC. Dot, dot, dot. Once again, they're just recapping the upcoming Tuesday Night Contender Series lineup. We got it all throughout August. It's, it's nice. Five fights per week. All right, looks like they're uh, going to do a little bit of a recap here, showing the highlights from Perez versus Gray and these knees of the body. Leg kick. Oh, that knee right there. That was the one I was talking about earlier that set up this Dar's choke. That put him to sleep. Great performance from Alex Perez. Okay, now Sanko's talking to Chito Marlon Vero. They really make the show just last way too long. I'm not saying she's not an attractive woman or she doesn't know what she's talking about, but I don't care. I just want to know who got these contracts. I like Chito Marlon Vera. Big fan. But I don't care about any of this. I just want to know who got the fucking contracts. Or contract. Okay, now they're recapping Pays versus Harris. Oh my god, they're going to do this with all of them? So an arse just unloading against the cage. Final sequence here where he beats him up, knee of the body. And Herzog had just seen enough.
wrap it up. I'm just staring at a guy wearing like an interesting hat. It's a baseball hat, but the material is like really defined and it's coarse like outdoor rug carpeting or something. Mike Rodriguez has something in his hand. Okay, and they're going to show us highlights of a fight that we just watched two minutes ago. Yep, flying knee, big punch, very impressive. Another angle, flying knee, big punches, very impressive. All right, finally, Laura Sanko talking with Dana White. He's made his decision. What will it be? Alex Perez, just saw him mouth that. They're all taking all the winners right now. Taking a picture together. Alex Perez just got chosen. No surprise after that phenomenal performance. Yeah, it's making it so theatrical. Mike Rodriguez gets the contract. All right, that's going to do it for us here at the Briefcast. Both contracts have been handed out. Mike Rodriguez and Eric Perez. Alex Perez? Yeah. Yep. Good fights. Thanks for listening. Come back next week. We're going to recap UFC, Dana White, all that shit. But mostly just come back for Dana White, Tuesday Night Contender Series, Episode 6. Alright. Peace.